Professional wrestling isn't a lifelong job. There has to be something beyond your time between the ropes. Let's take a look at WWE superstars who've left the ring for a new career. Number 15, Muhammad Hassan. Muhammad Hassan, aka Mark Capani, was expected to be WWE's breakout heel of 2005. An unfortunate series of circumstances saw him lose this momentum and get sent back to developmental territories for WWE, after which he decided to just get out of pro wrestling altogether. He pursued a career in education, becoming a history teacher after WWE, and he's currently a principal of a high school in New York. Number 14, Snitsky. Gene Snitsky was responsible for the punt her round the world when he kicked a baby doll on an episode of 2004. Snitsky had a four-year run in the company on the main roster, but eventually got lost in the shuffle, as some do, before being released. Today, he lives a simple life in Hamburg, Pennsylvania, running a supply shop for military and camping equipment. Number 13, Steve Blackman. Blackman reached cult-like status among WWE fans during his five-year run with the company between 1997 and 2002. The former hardcore champion known as the Lethal Weapon kept a low profile in the company and since leaving pro wrestling has become a bail bondsman as well as a martial arts instructor. Matt Hardy posted a photo recently with him showing that Blackman is kind of unrecognizable. I still wouldn't mess with him. I'm pretty sure he knows how to swing a kendo stick to this day. Number 12, Midian. Midian had a moderately successful run in WWE for five years, winning the Tag Team Championships twice as a part of the Godwins and winning the European Championship, or maybe just finding it in a bag somehow. The former member of the Ministry of Darkness decided that his wrestling career was kind of waning down, so he made a career jump into a new successful field as a chef, owning his own catering business. Number 11, Eve Torres. Eve Torres was one of the most popular female superstars in WWE between 2008 and 2012. She won the Divas Championship three times, and by all means had a very successful run with WWE. One could argue, maybe even a Hall of Fame run. After her release in late 2012, she married Renee Gracie as a key member of the infamous and influential mixed martial arts family. She also was a key part of the Gracie Women Empowered Self-Defense Program. She hasn't expressed any interest in returning to pro wrestling, although she has acted on the side a few times in film and TV projects. Number 10, Spike Dudley. Spike Dudley's four-year run in WWE involved him getting slammed a lot in memorable ways, and in 2015, he called it a career in pro wrestling. Known for his ECW hardcore style, Dudley now works hard in financial planning for a company called Mass Mutual. That's right, financial planning. Way safer than getting powerbombed through a table. Number nine, Rico Constantino. If you don't remember the name Rico Constantino, he was the flashy dressed side character who most notably during his WWE career managed the tag team of Billy and Chuck. He jumped into pro wrestling after a successful run on the American Gladiators TV show. The Ohio Valley wrestling graduate only spent a few short years on the main roster of WWE before a sudden release. After that, he did wrestle for All Japan Pro Wrestling before moving into a career in law enforcement and was even a paramedic. In 2021, he revealed that he works as a road supervisor and accident investigator for an insurance company. Number eight, Maven. The tough enough competitor, famously remember for his one big moment where he shockingly eliminated The Undertaker from the 2002 Royal Rumble match, yes, that indeed did happen, had a moderate push a year later, but would get lost in the shuffle of WWE and was released in 2005. He made sporadic appearances for TNA Wrestling, but ended his wrestling career in various jobs, such as being a bouncer in New York City, an account executive for the Brooklyn Nets. He now works in finance on Wall Street. He's partially involved in wrestling as a manager of the independent star, Justin Carino. Number seven, Chris Nowinski. Perhaps it's a bit unfair to call Chris Nowinski's job normal, given how it directly impacts the lives of so many people. Nowinski, a tough enough competitor, was forced to retire from pro wrestling after just one short year in WWE 
due to post-concussion symptoms. Since then, he has become an influential neuroscientist and co-founded the Concussion Legacy Foundation, dedicating his life to research and ending CTE. Today, he is considered one of the world's leading experts on concussions. Number six, Tori Wilson. She had a fantastic seven-year run with WWE, gaining a ton of momentum and screen time after jumping ship from WCW after it was purchased in 2001. Despite never becoming a women's champion, she was one of the most popular and beloved female superstars of the 2000s and got a deserving Hall of Fame induction in 2019. After her days in the ring, she became a fitness instructor and blogger. Number five, Ivory. One of the biggest stars to come out of GLOW, Ivory is a WWE Hall of Famer who's most remembered for her one-year run with Right to Censor. Since leaving the WWE in 2005, she got out of pro wrestling altogether and has been building an animal daycare business known as Downtown Dog since 2007. She has followed her passion with the business providing grooming, training, and daycare service to animals. Number 4. Layla Layla was one of the most important female stars of the Divas era, being a former Divas and Women's Champion. Mostly remembered for her time as one half of Lay Cool, Layla L retired from pro wrestling in 2015 and has become a real estate agent and married another ex-WWE wrestler in Ricky Ortiz. Number 3. Haku The legendary Haku was one of the most feared men in pro wrestling both for his scary on-screen persona as well as his crazy backstage antics. He did well with several stints in WWE, most notably winning the WWE Tag Team Championships with Andre the Giant. He excelled in WCW as well, but in 2003, after a short run with WWE, he called it a career and retired from active in-ring competition. In recent years, he has made cameos in New Japan Pro Wrestling and AEW. The man once known as King Haku went on to work in selling cars and managed a vehicle detail shop. Number 2. Ted DiBiase The original Million Dollar Man of Pro Wrestling retired in the late 1990s after an outrageously successful run in WWE where he at one time was one of the top villains in the company opposite Hulk Hogan. After a less than satisfying run in WCW, he would go on to create the Heart of David ministry and now works as an ordained minister, traveling around and helping those involved with substance abuse problems. Number 1. Diamond Dallas Page Inducted in the WWE Hall of Fame in 2017, DDP had an outstanding career for someone who became an in-ring competitor in his 30s, where he went on to win the WCW World Championship during the company's most successful years. Page has had a massive impact in his career post-wrestling. While he's made some appearances for AEW and WWE, his work with DDP Yoga has helped thousands of people across all walks of life. Wrestling legends like Scott Hall and Jake the Snake Roberts have utilized DDP Yoga to reinvent their lives physically and gain a positive mindset.